Welcome back to day four of my 31 days of Halloween drawing tutorials. I'm your host, BJ Dell, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can draw this cute spider all in real time, no time lapse. So if you wanna follow along and draw with me, keep watching. All right, so let's draw a cute spider. Today I'm using a 4,000 by 4,000, 300 DPI canvas. And for my brush, I'm gonna start out using my standard inker as part of my cartooning brush set. You can use whatever you feel comfortable with. And for my color palette, I've already got this made up just like all the other videos so far in this series. You can download the... <clears throat> All right, so let's go ahead and draw a spider. To start out, I'm using a 4,000 by 4,000, 300 DPI canvas. For my brush, I'm using my standard inker to start out with. This is part of my cartooning brush set. But if you don't wanna use that, you can use whatever you feel comfortable with. And then for the color palette, just like the rest of the series, I've already got this made up ahead of time. So you can download this one for free off my website. If you just go to bjdell.com and go to the YouTube reference page, I've got this on there. I'll link it in the description below. But you basically just save this JPEG and then go up to your wrench icon add, insert a photo, insert that palette. It's gonna make it a new layer on here and then you can just go through and long press to select the colors. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and pick my gray color here, the first one, and we're just gonna draw a simple circle. So this tutorial is gonna be, I think, pretty quick and easy. If you are a beginner starting out, this is gonna be fairly simple and easy to follow along with. So let's go ahead and grab our arrow here so we can move this kind of a little bit more centered. We've got the snapping turned on down here. You can see that this will show us right where it's centered. So that's gonna be where our guy starts out. I think I'm gonna shrink it down just a little bit here. And if you Go to adjust circles. I recommend using uh, uniform just because it keeps that same scale and your dimensions aren't gonna become wonky. So that's gonna be our spider's body. Next up, let's go ahead and give this guy some legs. So I'm gonna hit the plus button here. This is a new layer and I'm gonna drag this down to the bottom. Now, I'm going to do this really quick just by duplicating the layers. I'm gonna make one leg and go from there. Of course, it's gonna look a little weird. All the legs aren't gonna look exactly the same and doing this, it just makes it look a little cheaper. So if you wanna take the time to draw these out individually, you can, but this is gonna give you the idea of what you need to do. So I'm gonna use standard anchor streamline it's just that standard inker brush with streamline turned on and some other adjustments made. And then I'm gonna draw a leg in here and I don't have that connected. So let me try to connect that a little bit better. There we go. Kind of fix that part there at the top. All right, so I've got leg number one done. Now I'm gonna add in just some, some kind of like furry fuzzy hairs around here. So if I switch back to my standard inker, you're gonna see once I get the right brush size here, number one, I'm gonna fix that just a little bit more here. And I'm just gonna kind of taper off lines like this going around different ways, just to kind of make these things look a little fuzzy. This really no rhyme or reason, I'm just making sure that I twist and turn them different ways so they're not all facing the same way. And there's my first leg. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide this to the left and I'm gonna duplicate it. If you wanna do it this way, you're gonna save a lot of time. Like I said though, it's gonna look just the exact same from one to one to one. So I'm gonna move this up here a little bit, make it a little bit bigger and turn. And we've got leg number two. Now I'm gonna duplicate that bottom one again I always duplicate the first one just because as you start to move them around, you will lose a little bit of quality. So if you just keep on doing the same original one first, uh, that's going to save you some quality loss. So if I would keep on changing the new one that I just did, it's eventually going to turn pretty fuzzy. So that's why I always go to that first one to do this. 
get these in there. And I've got all four legs on the left. So now I'm just going to pinch all these together. So these are all on one layer now. So now I can slide this to the left and I can hit duplicate. Going back up to my arrow then, flipping horizontally and then sliding to the right allows me to place those over there. And you can see just how quick it is to do it this way. Like I said, it doesn't look the best, but it's up to you. If you want to save time or make it look better, totally up to you. So let's give this guy a face now. So going back up to our colors here, and I'm going to go to this yellow. And this is going to be what our eyes are. So if we go up to layer one, make a new layer. This is going to be our top layer. And I'm going to draw just a pretty big oval here. And drag and drop this in. Now going to my arrow, I'm going to kind of just adjust this a little bit more to my liking. And if you watch the previous videos in the series, for cartoons, I always like giving them different sized eyes. It just kind of brings home that comedic effect. So I'm going to slide this one to the left and I'm going to duplicate this. Going back up to my arrow here, I'm going to shrink this one down and move it off to the side and then connect these like so. Once I've got those connected, then I'm going to go ahead and pinch these together, make these all one layer. And then I'm going to center this just a little bit better here. All right. So there we go. I've got my eyes in there. So let's go ahead and give them some pupils. So going back up to my colors, then I'm going to go to the second color from the left here, this kind of darker color. It's almost black, but not quite. And I'm going to draw in a circle here for the left pupil. I got my color th drop threshold turned up too high. So if that happens to you, just slide to the left, turn it down, and you'll see it selects it a little bit better. And then drawing my one on the right. Drag and drop that one in. All right, there we go. So now I'm going to go ahead and select white here. And I'm just going to go ahead and add in some circles for that kind of reflection in the pupils. Get in further here so my circle actually makes a circle instead of some crazy shape. There we go. Drag and drop that one in. You'll see now my color drop threshold is off. So just do it like that. One there and then one here and one here erase this here a little bit as I get in closer here too you can kind of see I don't know if you can see that on there or not color drop threshold didn't really get that filled in so I'm going to go ahead and go around this there's just a hint of a line there so I'll just do that by hand to get that cleaned up a little bit All right, and then zooming back out, that's what we're left with. So now let's go ahead and give him uh, maybe some eyebrows and a smile next. So I'm going to make a new layer here. Whoops. New layer here. And just draw just kind of tapered line here for one eyebrow. And another tapered line over here. So he's got one eyebrow kind of going up, one eyebrow kind of going there. I like the look of that. And now for a smile, maybe once again, kind of a crooked smile here off to the side. And then we can pull that around there. I think that looks pretty cool. So let's go ahead and start adding some shadows and highlights to this guy. So our legs here are on two different layers. Let's just go ahead and pinch those together. So they're all on one now. And we want the shadows there to be a little bit darker. So... I think we're going to go ahead and make a new layer here and set this as clipping mask. And for this color, we're going to go ahead and go with this second black on the second row here. Uh, for this, I'm going to switch over to my texture pack. And I think for this, I'm going to use sand for this one. And then really lightly, I'm going to start playing around with my size of my brush. And I'm going to start to... 
just kind of go around the circle. This is why we made these separate layers, because right now you can see these all kind of blend together. It doesn't look like one's on top of the other at all until we start to go in and add these shadows. And you can see that really starts to split up that body from the legs. And that's the, uh, the look and the effect we're going for, is you want to be able to tell the difference there. I'm going to start to pull down and around the bottom here. I think for my light source, it's going to be coming in here from the top. So these are going to look about the same. Once again, here too, if you're wanting to save a ton of time, if you've got the light source coming in like that, these are going to have pretty close to the same shadows and highlights to where you could have done this all completely on one and then flipped it over. I'm going to do it on both to show you what it looks like. Uh, but now that we've got that, let's go ahead and add some shadows to the body. So going up to the body layer, going to make a new layer, going to set this as clipping mask once again. And we're going to go to this lighter gray now. And we're just going to go around the body. We don't get too dark here because it's going to ruin that effect that we had of splitting up the body from the legs. So just kind of use this sparingly here as it goes around. All right, I think that's good. Let's go ahead and add some underneath the eyes here. I want this to be just a little bit thinner here. Don't want it too thick because I'm going to go back in with highlights too to build this up. So we're going to sink these in just a little bit here. Do the same thing around the top here. See, I'm just going with that curve of the eye that we already established with that shape. There we go. Pull it in around here too. A little bit under that eyebrow there. All right. So that's done. Let's go ahead and switch over to some highlights now. So to do that, let's do the body first. And we're going to stay on the same layer. If you wanted to add another clipping mask layer here to keep the highlights and shadows separate, you could. Totally up to you. But I'm going to go with this third row down, this gray color here. And we're going to pull in some highlights around the top. And down the side here. Building that up. And like I said, I want to come down underneath here and kind of get some highlights in to make this look like it's edged out a little bit. And this is going to be a back and forth process to build this up. So we'll talk more about that here in a second. Got that there. Do the same thing here underneath the mouth. Add in another one here, just a little bit on the top. All right, so that's good. Let's go ahead and add the highlights now to the legs here. So once again, switch to that shadow layer for the legs. If you want to do this on a separate one, you can make a new layer so you've got your shadows and your highlights separate. Totally up to you. One of the benefits of doing that is if you realize that one's too light or too dark, you can go in and change the opacity of those layers. That's why I usually try to set these as clipping masks rather than alpha lock. On clipping mask, it's doing kind of the same thing, but you're on a separate layer, so you can make separate adjustments. If you do alpha lock on the layer, you're actually doing the shadows and the highlights coloring directly on that base layer. So if you need to change any values later, it's gonna change the entire thing and it's not gonna work out all that well. So that's why I like doing it this way. So now that we've got that, let's go ahead and choose white now. And we're gonna go back in and just add some brighter highlights to certain areas of this. So since it's coming in from the top, just a brighter highlight there, a little bit more shine to it. 
just makes it look a little bit more three dimensional. So we've got different values across here. We got a dark, we got that mid, we've got that kind of lighter highlight, and then we've got that really bright highlight there. And the key to this is just going really soft with the pressure that you're applying to your pencil as you do this. And then we can go back to our layers, go back to the body and do the exact same thing here on the body. You're making a, a brighter one here around the top. Like I said, the key to this is, or the idea of this is really just to start to make that kind of three dimensional look a little bit more believable. Gives it a little bit more of a rendered look. There's that. And we can kind of add maybe a couple of these down here too. Okay, now I talked about building these up as kind of a back and forth process. So that's what we're going to do next by going back to our shadow color here, the darker one. And let's go back to, well, we're already on the layer. We need the shadow and highlight color for the head. And we're just going to add in a little bit of a darker shadow under here. And you're going to see it starts to kind of form that three dimensional look we're going for. So having that dark coming into the highlight coming back into this really starts to kind of form this give it some shape makes it kind of stand out and pop and that three-dimensional feeling is achieved okay so there we go last thing that we need to do on this section is of course we can't leave the eyes like that they look really plain so let's go ahead and work on those next so going back up to our color palette here Let's go ahead and the second row, the third one over. Let's grab that one. And going to the eyes, I'm going to hit the plus button here. And we're going to go ahead and set this new layer as clipping mask once again. And we're going to start to just kind of build up some shadows in here. Just in the size as we go to make sure it's not too big, not too small. The whole idea is... Once again, we just want that kind of three-dimensional look. Now that we've got in there with the shadows, we can select white here from the outside and start to pull this around. Left in the top. to Bring home that three-dimensional feeling again. And then now that we've got that, we can go in kind of heavier to give that really big reflection in here. Once again, we've got that kind of faded out highlight, and then we're bringing it home with that really big reflection. You can see how this is really just starting to build up that whole 3D look. I think I'm going to go ahead on layer four, going directly on, now we can still go on layer seven, it's okay. The uh, layer that we were on here, we can kind of pull around some white here at the bottom so that the eyes here have a little bit more shape to them. There we go. Super cool. Uh, let's go ahead and give this guy some strings coming out. He's kind of going to be, you know, hanging down off of his web. So we need the web. So let's go ahead and make a new layer here. We're going to drag this one down to the bottom. And then we're going to go ahead and select our darker color here on that top. And then going back to our brushes, I'm gonna switch back to my standard anchor. Actually, I'm just gonna to go to Streamline. And then I'm just gonna pull down a web here, make it a little thicker. There we go. I'll make this look a little 3D. So if we add a new layer here, and then going in, I'm gonna drop my size just a little bit. And I'm going to bring some curves around there. Now to make this look 3D, we're going to go ahead and we'll just do this directly on this layer. So if we alpha lock this one and then select our white here, going back to our brushes, we're going to do our sand texture here again. And where these overlap, we're just going to bring white on top so that these look like they're 
in front here. You can kind of see how that breaks that up too. It's really, uh, that's what I want to do on the other one. It's really not a lot of work, but once we pull out, it's hard to see right now just because we are so close and everything looks a little blurry. But when we pull out here, you're going to see really how well this effect works. So now pulling out, you can kind of see, yeah, that does look three dimensional. Didn't take that long to do either. Super easy. And then going back down to the actual uh, regular string coming down, we're going to go ahead and alpha lock that one. And I'm just going to pull a little bit of white on the in-between parts here. Just kind of break that up a little bit too. All right, so there's our guy. It looks kind of plain though. So let's go ahead and add a background to this. So going back up to our colors here, let's just get the blue, the last color in the color palette, making a new layer, dragging this down to the bottom. This one's gonna be super simple. Let's just use a texture. So still on the texture brush library. Uh, I'm just gonna use cardboard and setting this really big. I'm just gonna kind of start to go in a circle here in the center, hard, and then kind of ease up as I go out. And it's going to give that cardboard texture to the back. Not anything crazy, but at least he's not sitting there on just a plain white background. And then last but not least, I just need to sign this guy. So let me do that next. Going back to my anchor and just throwing the signature down here at the bottom. So there we go. Day four's tutorial on how to draw a cute spider. Really appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully you liked today's video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that bell for notifications so you can get alerted when I post new videos. Today's day four. I'm doing this the entire month of October. So you got 27 more of these back to back. So hopefully you guys will return and join me for the next one. Uh, if you guys do take part in these tutorials and make a finished design, I definitely want to see it. So if you're on Instagram or Twitter, tag me at BJ Dell and I will check them out. Or if you want to post them in the group that I've got on Facebook called Keep Creating a Group for Artists by Artists, I'll link that in the description below and you can post them over there. So that's it for me today. And until next time, keep creating. Thank you.